Well, good morning, everyone. I bet you didn't think you'd see another one of these videos so soon. <laughs> it is 2.15 in the morning. I set my alarm for 2.15. Ended up waking up at 2 anyways. So I got up, got dressed, got the car packed, and now I'm going to start it and let the AC start while I wait for my traveling buddy. She's supposed to get here at 2.30. It's actually, it's 2.17 now in the morning. Up. Yeah. Ten minutes early. What a freaking legend. The goal was to be on the road by 3, but um, that would put us at Idabel, Oklahoma, at the facility around um, like 8.30, including stops, 8.30 in the morning, which the adoption wasn't supposed to start till 10 a.m., but Paul called me yesterday and told me he's already there. You haven't met Paul yet, okay? But he's already there, and he called me and said they're they're gonna pretty much start at eight a.m. So oh. I don't I don't want to be there <laughs> late. I want first pick. I'm glad I didn't go to sleep. Yeah. Well, so, we had people over. Let's and see. Then... Um, Ida, Bell, Rodeo, I think is. What oh, is this not at Paul's Valley? No, no. It's a satellite adoption event. So this is different from the Paul's so Valley So like the adoption. one they were supposed to have in Denton and then never mm -hmm. had because... Yeah, kind of like COVID. that one. Or yeah, actually mostly like that one. The one at Denton would have only had yearlings though. Okay. But this one's going to have a huge selection. So they've been bragging of Mustangs and Burrows. They said they're going to have about 140 Mustangs and Burrows there to pick from. That's a decent so, amount. That is a de decent amount. My guess would be there's going to be about 40 burrows and about 100 Mustangs. You should just so, get a burrow and surprise everybody. That would be kind of cool. I've always wanted to do it. I would want a mule. Do they have Mustang oh, mules? It, it, yes, they do. They're rare. I, love, yeah. I love mules. Um, okay. Try and find Idabel Rodeo on here because I couldn't find it. And I want to see how long it says it's going to take us. Oh, I found it. So this is this is what I wanted to see. Ha ha ha! Yeah. So from where we started, it was about exactly five hours drive. Oh, that's not even that far. No. Why it, haven't that's, I gone to? <laughs> that's the exact same distance as Paul's Valley too. It is four ten in the morning. We are driving to Oklahoma, and uh, you can see some of the storm clouds that have been um, coming off of Hurricane Laura in the distance. Oh, there's a little bit of lightning. I swear, every single time I turn the camera on, there's a little bit more. Oh yeah. It was like every single time I turned the camera on, it would stop. We are, where are we? We are in the middle of nowhere, Texas. We're a little under three hours out. <laughs> We've run into some heavy rain. Oh, I can't see you at all. In storms. <laughs> oh, here we go. I don't even know if they can hear me over the rain. It's not, the rain's not that bad. This is some of the, some of the outer 
uh, remnants of Hurricane Laura. Just some of the crap she's left behind. Okay, it gets low over here. I don't like this. Wow. Almost there. I've never been here before. This is what's called a satellite adoption event. So they don't usually keep horses here. They just had a little event here and brought some Mustangs. Um, I got tired so Kayla drove for me for a little bit. We're so close. 60 feet. It's pretty outside. Everything's so green. There are the Mustangs. I've never been to an event like this. It's just kind of, they're just there. So interesting. Oh. Okay. These are all yearlings. Yeah, I think that's the yearling pen right back there. Oh, oh, we can't walk around through here. I thought there would be a spot in between. Hey, donkeys. Hey, Burroughs. Yeah, these look like yearlings for sure, look for at sure. Julia, Where? Right here. No, it's not. not the, the you mean the you mean I the meant Don. Don? Yeah, he's cute. He's got his zebra stripe legs. Oh, look at this little bay with the one star. You look so friendly and huge. Look how big he is. I don't think he's a yearling. I think he's probably. No, he looks immature. He's Look. A yearling. He's definitely not too. Look how short that tail is. Oh, y'all are babies. Look at this little Rabicano. Oh, look at the little tail. It's a gray. Look at that one's little face. That one looks familiar. I think it was at the last adoption. That one has a little cow horse face. Hey, cuties. You're big too, they got some big ones. I think some of these are from Utah. I think a lot of these are from Utah. Oof. There are so many young ones. This is like the third penny yearlings. Do they have any adult horses? Over there, they're some full size ones. <sighs> Better be. <laughs> well, Shoot. You don't, you don't want a gentle a yearling? These ones look older. Look at that little. But not little rideable. Paint. I think they're older. Yeah, two. <laughs> this one. Wow, look at this one. I did see a confirmation, but it's color is pretty. With this gray mane. Well, look at this sorrel in the back. She's fat. I she's, like her. She's mature for sure. So this mare here actually ended up being my favorite from the adoption event. She was definitely the most attractive one there. She had all the correct confirmation, and honestly, if she didn't have a brand on her, you could have mistaken her for a quarter horse. She was just very well built, and overall seemed like a really good package. Right here, coming up. Yes, yeah, some of these, some of these look like two-year-olds. She's got a little. Honey. Holy flaxen mane. That's what I was telling you. I haven't seen his confirmation. Oh yet, my goodness. 
He's handsome. You are handsome. And look at that bone on him. Holy shit. Wait, but look at his mate. look at his look at his hawks. They look good. Hawks is always the first thing you look at. Yeah, because <laughs> I've noticed that about you. Because if your hawks aren't good, you can't do anything for me. Like you, you got a big old dreadlock. Oh hi. Are you friendly? No. This one over here is friendly. Hey sucker. Because it's a bay. Well, the bays are friendly, it's true. That's a pretty oh, bay right oh, there, though. Oh, 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 oh. He's got a pretty... No, you don't want to touch it, just sniff it. This one right here that has his head looking up, he's a pretty bay. Yeah. I just like his coloring. It's like a... It's I'm a, looking for a bigger one, so he's he would be a good one. So that big guy that I was talking about was this big... Um, Bay Gelding. I really liked the look of him because he was large and he had a really soft, sweet face. I also like that sorrel you see next to him with the kind of gray mane, but he ended up having kind of a longer back that looked like he had a little bit of weaker conformation. So the bay guy stood out to me because he was pretty well balanced overall. I also like this younger bay one that Kayla pointed out. And I would have gotten him, except I was looking for something a little bit larger. And this guy didn't look quite big enough to handle the strain of a lot of riding. So while he seemed very sweet and I loved his personality, I had to pass on that one. But this, this, this box of main one, he's going to go for a lot because he's pretty. I don't know what the market's going to look like. They don't look as mature. Look at the blaze on that bay. It's cute. Yeah, I'm talking about you. He just looked over. They've already made the ground muddy. They've only been here a day. Well, this hey, one's buddy. a little rony pony. Yeah, you do have a little bit of roan. Oh, are you friendly? I like its little ears. Are you friendly? This one's tall. They're all looking at me. These are real skinny. They all have pretty faces. Look at these wild mustangs. They are so friendly. Oh my goodness. I'm just kidding y'all, these are the Saddlebrook horses. <laughs> well actually, actually I know that the Sorrel is a mustang that was once wild. I don't know about the buckskin or the oh, well. the done. I haven't met that one before. But this sorrel, he was in my last video too. He's been working out of Paul's Valley for years, getting these mustangs sorted onto the trailer. Like they're built a lot the same. These guys look young too. They all look pretty young to me. Hi. What? What oh, <gasps> you're so tiny. Aw. Look how tiny! Oh, you got a little boo-boo on your face. Poor kid. Oh my god, that horse has to be like 10 hands. They're all looking at my dog. <laughs> She's not gonna get you, I promise. Hey, kid. You're pretty friendly. Yeah. I'm guessing right now. I'll oh. Get, I'll get two. Look at this one with the stripe in here. This, this the Danish looking one with its butt to us? Yeah. Yeah. Turn around. You look cool. He looks like he. Well, not, not this one. This one has a stripe, too, that I just noticed. But I was looking at the one behind it, that Gruya kind of color. Oh, hi. I like this one. Oh, hi. 68. Do you want to be my friend? Oh, hi. I'm going to go get you a piece of the paper. 
This one's pretty. You've got a nice neck. I like your neck. Can we can we make friends? Oh, Kayla's making friends. Aw. Yeah. You're brave too. Wow, you just walked right up. There's no hesitation. Oh, that one's face is bleeding. Hi, bud. Hi. Look at these. So that this horse has a really nice temperament, I can oh. tell. You would be a good pick to gentle down easy. Yeah. Yeah. You're practically broke. Are we sure you're not one of the saddle broke horses? So I really like this one oh, too. He was super sweet. The only thing was he was yeah. a little young and a little underweight to get started under saddle. So uh, I had to pass on most of the ones in these pens because I'd really fallen in love with that sorrel mare and she was one of the last pins to get auctioned off, so I decided to hold my bidding until I got to that sorrel mare. Can I touch your face? No, not yet. You would be a good pick. You're so sweet. I'll keep you in mind, buddy. I'll keep you in mind. Pretty curious and friendly too. I like the size of this one. Are you a mare? Are y'all mares? I don't know yet. <laughs> he says back off. That's my friend. Oh, nope. Didn't like that. Is that me? Yeah. Okay, so these are all gildings then. You're a sweet little booger. Here we go. Could get one to match Julius. Yeah? You wanna match Julius? Oh, you wanna go make friends. I'm sorry. Those look like strays. You can't play with them. They don't have their shots. I like this one with the paint markings on this leg. Oh, hello. These guys look real young. Y'all look real young. Are y'all mares? I can't tell. Oh, that dun in the back is cute. So that dun in the back was probably actually my second pick overall. I didn't get any real good pictures of her, but she was put together really nicely. I just decided to pass on her so that I could bid on the sorrel mare I really liked. That's, that's, yeah, I was just talking about that one. 8635. Yes, we got our paper here that has all the information. Where is he? I didn't see him. Oh, I found him. Six from Nevada. <laughs> the paint's cute, but he's little. You're cute. I'm looking for one that's old enough and big enough to get started. Gray, but that would, needs a lot of groceries. He does need a lot of groceries. I just like his color, and I kind of like, I like how his shoulder ties in the oh, a little bit. Hey there, Tubby. You got a big old belly. 
Are y'all mares? Some of these mares could be pregnant. I might not get a mare. You're sweet. Oh, oh I like this bay. She's tubby. Oh, this bay right here? This one's tubby. No, but I like this one. <laughs> yeah. She's Look pretty. Little four little white socks. She's got a sweet face. Mate, stop pulling on me. I swear. You want to come home with me? She's four from Nevada. Aw. Four-year-old is a good age. I like her. Anything here? These are all young. I'm just getting a video. Hi. They all look so young. I think those are. Hmm. Well, they were all riled up yesterday. Mm-hmm. That's pin three. Yeah, they're yearlings. It's more burrows. Alright, so I went ahead and earlier got my list with all the horses' names and information on it. And I marked down some of my favorites, scratched out some of the ones I didn't like. Now I've got my um, adoption incentive program form, uh, my application for adoption, and the other adoption incentive agreement form. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these out over here. If you go over to the other side, they definitely eat it. You don't know what that is, do you? <laughs> hey, little pipsqueak. I promise it's good, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Take it. No, he wants your love. <laughs> you want my love instead. You can have that. Please get this apple core off my hands. What a good boy. He's going to the saddle train horses. He's so sweet. The history of these horses, they date back to the, the days of the early Spanish explorers who introduced horses to North America. Burrows were brought in by missionaries and later used extensively by miners. Uh, descendants of those wild horses and burrows, or descendants of those horses and burrows either escaped or were abandoned. And uh, that's where the wild horses and burrows originated. So uh, a lot of ranchers, prospectors, Native American tribes, U.S. Cavalry, either turned out horses or they escaped from them. And uh, those horses are what started breeding and those are the horses that you see out west today. So they don't originate, they're not a wild horse, they're a feral horse. So they all originated from domestic stock. Um, as the west was settled, uh, those horses and burros were considered pests and subsequently hunted by mustangers drastically reduced the population of horses and burros on the range. So wild horse advocates such as Velma Johnson, who is better known as Wild Horse Annie, started a national letter writing campaign that involved school children. And they were actually able to convince Congress to pass the Free Roaming Horse and Burrow Act of 1971, which uh, provided for the management and protection of wild horses and burros on specific BLM and Forest Service land. Well, that natural, or excuse me, that uh, federal protection and lack of natural predators has resulted in uh, thriving wild horse and burrow herds that, left unchecked, can actually double in size every four years and triple every six. So, uh, 
Wild horses and burros are actually managed in what are known as herd management areas. There's a total of 177 herd management areas in 10 western states. Each one of those herd management areas has what's called an appropriate management level. That's just the number of horses that that area can sustain and maintain a thriving natural ecological balance. So, um, the 10 western states, basically, where you'll find wild horses and burros, if you drew a line from New Mexico up to Colorado, Wyoming, into Montana, on west, except for Washington state, each one of those western states has a wild horse burrow and or wild horse bird in it. Um, the total number of horses that we should be managing for in those 177 HMAs is around 27,000. Our current population is closer to 100,000 with, with this year's full crop. So to put it in perspective, the total number of horses that we'll get this year just off our full crop will likely exceed the total number of horses that were on the range when the Wild Free Roaming Horse and Burrow Act was passed in 1971. Virtually every wild horse and burrow herd management area is overrun. Now the BLM has taken steps where it can to put the program on a more sustainable path such as uh, taking uh, advice from National Academy of Sciences and, and funding research to put the program on a more sustainable path, but we're not anywhere close. We uh, do use some uh, immunocontraceptives on the range, but the delivery method is still that we need to gather them, you know, give them inoculation. A lot of times we have to hold them for 30 days, turn them back out. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not real uh, effective. You know, it's about 40-50% at best. So, until we find something that's a little more reliable and have a little better uh, delivery method, you know, gathering these excess wild horses and burros is still going to be the most uh, efficient manner that we have to manage horses and burros on the range. And those are the horses and burros that you can see here today. Uh, so if you want to adopt, uh, first of all, obviously you need to fill out an application. And uh, let me remind you that any horse two or older, except for our saddle broke horses, any horse two or older, you need a six foot fence. These pins are six foot. Earlands, you need a five foot, burrows four foot. And initially, they need to be in a good pipe panel or board fence. Once you get them gentle, where you know you can maybe handle them a little bit, get them coming to feed, you can kick them out then. But until then, they need to be in a pretty solid corral. So when you get your horses home and you think you might have a weak spot in your fence or a low spot or something like that, please make sure you get it buttoned up before you let your horse out. And uh, I have to say this because it happens from time to time. Also, when you get your horse home, please make sure you can back up all the way to your alleyway or to your pen before you open the trailer gate. Don't try to lead it. Don't try to you know, haze it over there because it'll be gone. Uh, the reason why we call it an adoption is because the Bureau of Land Management retains ownership until a certificate of title is issued. You are eligible to get a certificate of title after you've had the horse for one year. This is what a certificate of title looks like. I mean that literally. It is not considered private property until you literally have this in your hand. So, when you, after you've had the horse for, you know, 12, 12 months or so, you'll get a title eligibility letter. It looks like junk mail, so be on the lookout. But this is what it looks like. You just have your vet, barrier, uh, county extension agent, BLM official, somebody knowledgeable with horses come out and sign it. It's just a visual inspection. It's not an in-depth inspection. You don't have to you take the uh, I haven't got to it yet. Um, now, if you're, if you're going to uh, participate in the Adoption Incentive Program, this uh, Certificate of Title application needs to be filled out by either a BLM official or a veterinarian. So if you're participating in the AIP program, it has to be signed by a vet or BLM personnel. Okay, there's no fee in applying for title, but you must apply for title to get title. And until you receive title, the, the horse or burrow is still considered government property. Uh, Alright, your title applications are generated actually out of Denver. So if you happen to move, or if you get a different phone number, if you're going to move your horse away for more than 30 days from the facility that you put on your application, please let us know. If your horse dies, please let us know right away. If you have a vet look at it and it's deemed that that horse died of a pre-existing condition, we will issue you a certificate good for one year for the amount that you paid for that horse. But you can only get one horse. If you pay, 
you know, thousand dollars for a horse, you can't go buy, you know, four horses for twenty five. It's good for one horse, but up to a thousand dollars, okay? Or whatever you pay for that horse. Um, compliance. On these AIP, well, every horse that's adopted, we check every one of them. So if somebody calls you and says, you know, I'm Jimmy Galloway with BLM, I'm coming out to see your horse, blah, 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 don't feel like we're picking on you. We check every one of them. So again, it's important that you let us know if you get a new cell phone or a new address or something to move that animal. Please let us know so we know where to find that horse and know where to get your uh, title application sent. Uh, some of these Jennies or mares, they, they may be bred. We don't break check anything. If they fall at your place, it's considered private property. If they fall on the trailer on the way home, it's considered <laughs> private property. If for some reason that we have to go in and pick up that mare or Jenny and that foal's not old enough to wean, then we'll take them both. But otherwise, that foal is considered private property. Um, so the way we're going to work this here today, we're just going to start here at pin 1, work our way around, end up at pin 16. And so I'll just go down the list. If you're interested in that animal, you know, starts off at 25. If more than one person is interested in the same animal, we'll have an auction. Uh, saddle horses. Again, you only need uh, a five and a half foot fence. You don't need a six foot fence for the saddle horses. We consider them Greenboro. I mean, they do a pretty good job and they've been riding them for a number of months, but nobody here has been around them, so we don't know. We just want you to be sure that, you know, you're not thinking you're bringing home a bomb through force. We're going to treat them as Greenboro, but. A lot of them have a, several months riding on them, so they've got a good start. They will start at 125. They are not eligible for adoption setting. Okay? Any trained horse isn't eligible for AIP program. Uh, so after you bid on a horse, Pat will... Where, where's Pat at? Pat will be working the receipt book and he'll give you a receipt. So after you are the successful bidder on that horse, go see Pat. He'll give you your uh It'll your show receipt. what your name is or your bid number, the amount, what pin. And then when you get all when you're done bidding on everything, you can take it all to Evelyn, pay out. But yeah, but we'll give you this will show what you got. Do not trade them around amongst yourselves. We tried that, oh here I want this one, because that messes her deal up. If you want to trade, I mean, we can work that stuff out. If you got one that she wants, but don't just do it amongst yourselves because then it messes all our paperwork up. Okay. So after the successful bidder, we'll see And then when you're done, you got all the animals that you want, go see Evelyn pay out. When you're up there, you're going to be signing a contract it's called the Private Maintenance and Care Agreement. It looks just like this. Make sure you read the back of it. It has the prohibited acts in terms of the adoption. Again, during the course of the year, until you receive title, you cannot sell, trade, or give away that horse, okay? If for some reason you can no longer care for the horse, you know, you move, or you're going through a divorce, or whatever, you know, call us, we'll work with you to rehome that horse with somebody else, or make arrangements for you to get that horse back into BLM care. You're not stuck with that horse, but again, you can't sell it to a private property, or to a private individual. Um, it doesn't matter, it's, like, it's not automatic, to, so you could have this horse for 10, 15, 20 years, and then you give it to your neighbor, and he sells it to his cousin, and he sells it at the sale barn. When it gets to the sale barn, you know, they're going to read that freeze brand, take a picture, we're going to ID it, and it's going to come back to you because you were the original adopter. You know, even though you, in good faith, you've had it for 15 years, you never got it titled. So please, please, please make sure that you apply for title of these horses and get titled. Um, after you've gone to the to the office, filled out your paperwork, you're going to be signing this contract. She'll give you a load ticket. Okay, make sure that you have this in hand before you get in line. I think the best way to work this here is when you're ready to load. If you can just come in that way and then pull up here and then pull out on that road right there, uh, that would probably work best and keep everybody from getting congested right there. Um, but please make sure that you have your uh, your load ticket before you get in line. So when you have it and you're ready to load, give it to us. We'll load your horse for you. Uh, if you want to halter it, furnish a halter lead rope. We'll put it on and load it for you. Um, we'll also be getting health papers to these horses. That'll tell you where they were gathered, when they were gathered, when they were vaccinated and warm. They are current on everything. Have a current cognizance. Are they all individual cognizance? 
can tell you. They may not be. I they may know. not have the goldenrod copy. They'll be on a bleed sheet. Those bleed sheets, that it's a USDA form, they're legal. Okay, it has an accession number. Your horse will be highlighted. Um, these horses, like I said, they've been vaccinated for everything under the sun. Eastern, Western, Flu, Tetanus, Rhino, uh, West Nile, uh, Rabies, Strep. So you can look on there and see when they're, they were last inoculated. They're current on their uh, worming as well. Good. We will load up until 6 o'clock tonight, and if you're not going to load till tomorrow, please tell Evelyn at the, uh, up the trailer so she'll hold on to your load ticket, okay? Then you come up tomorrow, we're we'll loading from 8 o'clock till noon tomorrow. We ask that you be here by 11 so we can get those horses uh, loaded out. If you're going to be late or if you get a flat tire or something, please call us and let us know so we don't re-adopt your horse with somebody else. Come on, Camille. All right, five and a quarter, five and a half. I'll five seventy-five back to you. Come on, Camille. Now six hundred. Now six and a quarter. You wanted six and a quarter. Got six hundred here. We get six and a quarter. Six hundred, six and a quarter. Six hundred, six and a quarter. All in, all done. Six hundred, six and a quarter. You've got six hundred dollars market on ten eight four. Ten eight four. You want another piece? He gentle. He real gentle. Okay. So uh, I didn't get the mare. That was my top choice. She was just going for way too much money. So now I'm looking back at some of the ones that were passed over that uh, I liked. This is one of them. This guy here. <laughs> this big bay guy. But um... I've got another big bay guy that I liked too. I think I think I like the other big bay guy a little better. So we'll see. This is the guy. You're going to a good home. I ended up getting. So I finished my quiz. I'm just waiting for the due date to pass so I can check my score. But look where we parked. Reserved for jail van. We're the jail van. We're a couple of hoodlums. <laughs> okay, due date just passed. Let's see. Made a 72. I'll take it. That's not bad for, you know, not studying and taking it in a parking lot behind the McCurtain County Jail. Honestly, I'm proud of myself. After standing in the sun all day. Most of these I got partially correct. I got a bunch correct, a couple partially correct, and then two incorrect. 
so. Jew. Hooray for not studying. paperwork now that I finalized payment. I also got this cool t-shirt. Ooh, I like the color. I already had two blue ones, so I told her to give me anything but blue. <laughs> so, t-shirt. Big old folder. This comes with my load ticket, which I'm going to give to the gentleman over there when I get a little bit closer so they can go get my horse. Um, this is really cool. This is caring for your wild horse burrow. And what's cool about this Hold on. That me and Jude are in it. I can't see it. Oh, there you go. I sent Crystal that picture last year, and I guess she included it in their pamphlet. I've heard it was in there, but I've never seen it for myself, so that was really cool. Um, then just all my different forms. So my private maintenance and care agreement for this horse that says this horse is in my care. My paperwork for the adoption incentive program where I'll get a thousand dollars back on that wild horse. Oh, I forgot about my dog. <laughs> May! Come on! <laughs> come on, puppy! Okay, here she goes. Watch out. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> She's such a good dog. <laughs> then I got my horse's paperwork, so I get to learn a little more about him now. He is from Eagle, Nevada. I've heard they're athletic horses and smart. Um, born in 2014, so that makes him six years old. He was captured just this February. So he has been a stallion for six years. So that can make him a bit of a challenge. I hope not. <laughs> they have 14.2 as his height. That Absolutely was, not. That was taken in uh, February. But he, he wouldn't have grown since then because he's six years old. But I think he's bigger than 14, too. I mean, he was one of the biggest ones there. Um, and this has his vaccination history, deworming history. He was just recently dewormed again. And then they vaccinate for everything. All the encephalitis, um, streptococcus, tetanus, influenza, West Nile, rabies. They get everything. Um... And then just some more records of, I guess these are all the different horses. Anyways, um, ah, no, this is his health certification. So this says I am good to go across state borders with him. Vaccination record, health record. Looks like he's only ever needed basic care. Sometimes they have to do a little bit extra. But yeah, all the good stuff I need. So this will all go back in his folder and uh, stay with me for when I need it. Pretty cool stuff. Not him? Nope. The next one is him. The last one in the pen. I like Baze. Solid Baze, it's my favorite. He wasn't our first choice, but he was our second, and so favorite color is broke. <laughs>
a fast sucker. Halter? No halter. Thank you. I'm ready to go. Get me out of this heat. Woohoo! Another tag on my dash. Usually those hang from my rear view mirror, <laughs> but a um, little sticky doodad fell off. <laughs> so they're, they're all sitting on my dashboard. Um, I've got, let's go through them real quick. I've got a lot. Um, so some of the Mustangs I'm trained, I don't have their tags because I've given them to um, people who are important in their lives. This was my first one from Rory, 2353. Uh, that one's old, old, old because she wore it for like six years before I adopted her and then it's been in my truck for three years. Let's see, uh, we're next, we're next. This one's my Revy Pony. 3436. She was my 2018 makeover horse. Love that horse to death. Who else? Tuxedo comes next. 6868, my little heart horse. Then we got Jude up next. Judy Booty. Judy Booty. 7822, my 2019 Extreme Mustang race horse. 6167, Luna. <laughs> she has an awesome, awesome mare that I did for the 2020 Extreme Mustang Makeover. She's now living it up in, I think, uh, New Mexico. And her, her owner absolutely adores the crap out of her. Same with all the horses. that. Uh, and then this is the new guy. So uh, the tags I don't have are Echo, who was a tip horse I trained, and I gave, I gave her tag to my friend who adopted her. And I don't have Julius's tag, actually. I gave his tag away to the man who sponsored Julius so that he could be um, adopted and uh, reassigned to a forever home. The only thing that guy asked in return was for the Mustang's tag and he also is sponsoring my newest Mustang. Um, so without him this Mustang wouldn't have gotten picked up and wouldn't have even gotten adopted because he was one that didn't get any bids. I went back and picked him out. So uh, this guy's got my um, sponsor to thank for his whole new bright future. So this tag is also going back to my sponsor. So uh, that just about completes the collection I have right now. Pretty exciting. Stop for gas. We're about, we're probably about halfway home now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can't even see you. You don't even show up. It's too dark. Oh, what a sweetie pie. What a sweetie pie. Let's go over here. He is a big guy. He's definitely taller at the withers than at the hip. By a lot. Hi, handsome man. You do have big feet. Oh, what a sweetie. What a sweetie. Yeah, so what attracted us to him is he's got a sweet eye and a handsome face. Hey, buddy. You can you come say hi? Oh, first touches. Not real first touches. They don't count in a trailer. I've had horses be real friendly in a trailer and then get out and be real skittish, so you can never really tell what they're gonna be like till you get them home.
where we are. 10.14 in the afternoon. I have never gotten home from a Mustang adoption after dark. This one took way longer. Juju! What are you writing? <laughs> He's like, oh no. Something's about to be changing. My horses are angry. They're hangry. Rory's like, what's going on? Tuxedo's just like, where's my food? I don't even know where Julius went. Juju! He's hiding way back there. Well, we made it safe and sound though. We're gonna see if we can get this trailer backed up to the pen in the dark. Oh boy, it's very bumpy back here. Sorry, new guy. Hey, new kid, what you think? What you think, buddy? Julius! He's like, what the heck? You got a new one? I'm your new one. I need to get that fly mask. No, not yet. I just pre-mixed it. I was like, it's not gonna be here anymore. No, <laughs> I forgot that I, I feed, I told Connor to feed in there, so I put it out and then I put it back in the barn. Hey, kiddo. Don't worry. You'll get some fresh water. Nice place to roll. Lots of food and hay. There's Julius. Yeah, except Julius is like literally right behind. He's not moving. Julius, the world's best trailer backer. Huh? I can't really see him. Well, he was getting kind of anxious over here by himself. Looked like he wanted to maybe try and get out. And uh, was making me a little worried. Can't even see him, he's too dark. You can kind of see Julius over there. Anyways, I threw Julius in here so he could have some bro time. I don't like unloading horses when it's dark because uh, they get nervous. They can't see anything. They hear all sorts of weird noises like my freaking dog here. And uh, he was just getting very worked up. So went ahead and put Julius in here and he's calmed right down immediately having a buddy. So Julius won't stay in here, obviously. But, um, you know, he gets to... Julius is used to eating in here, so he gets to help make that a safe space for the new guy and um, get him settled in a little bit. Julius will be out here in the morning, um, probably at feeding time. So, yeah, the new guy's settling in pretty well now. You can see he's about maybe half a hand to a hand. Well, you can't see. I can see. He's about a hand or half a hand taller than Julius who is about 14 too. So this guy's at least 15 hands. So he's a bit of a big un. Anyways, um, that is picking up my newest Mustang. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational. Um, make sure to stay tuned for this guy's training progress and also for some new videos on Julius. His training is going very well. I'm just behind in putting out his videos. So, y'all make sure to subscribe and stay tuned.